What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 77 and we started today's episode off here with a game against Everton at Vicarage Road back in the Premier League on the back of that win against Ajax in the last game in the last episode. We just about managed to overcome the Dutch side and win the game by two goals to one here at Vicarage Road but our last Premier League game was a loss away at the Etihad Stadium against Manchester City and I did discuss it in the last episode, we're beginning to feel the pressure a little bit now, obviously right now in the Premier League we are still top of the table despite our last league game being a defeat but only a few points clear of Manchester United Chelsea and City are both getting back into the title race as well and in the Champions League as well just about overcoming Ajax in that second leg and getting ourselves through to the Champions League quarterfinals obviously in the FA Cup too we've got the replay in the quarterfinals to come against City in this episode right now being in all three of these competitions and trying to go for them all as well it really is beginning to show its toll on the team take its toll on the team I should say in terms of fitness a lot of the players get fatigued really quickly we're taking on Everton for the first game of today's episode here First chance fell early on, but I thought Ryan Tallis should have got a penalty for a shove in the back, but the referee said nothing. Then Balotelli went pretty close there just after the restart in the second half, and in the 84th minute we had a good chance there. Balotelli's bicycle kick was well saved by Joel, though, and Everton got the ball away, but it was how the game would finish. This one, probably one of the worst games of the series so far, so sorry about that. It did finish as a goalless draw. Watford nil, Everton nil, and as you can see, Everton in the game had zero shots. We had had two, and it also won a possession battle as well, and it was a game for the defenders, really. You know, both defences locked it down really well. It was a poor game, though. You know, I'm not going to deny that. It was a really poor game. And unfortunately for us, we could only manage a point in that game. So pretty disappointed about that one because obviously you can't win every game. I know that. But those are the games where you should be winning. You know, you should be targeting and getting the win as well and expecting nothing less than that. Because right now we're top of the table. But our last four games, only one has been a win. You know, obviously that draw against Everton there. The game prior to that was the win against Ajax. And then the games prior to that game against Ajax were the draw against City in the FA Cup. And of course, the loss in our last league game away at the Etihad Stadium. Those are the games where we should be returning to winning ways and feeling really, really good about ourselves in the league and remembering that we are top of the table right now. You know, we're not little Watford who just came up from the championship. We're top of the table, Watford, going for the league. There's only a few games to go. Everton aren't a bad side at all. They play some pretty football under Martinez, but they're not in the top four. We're at home. We should have won that game. So pretty frustrated about that one, but hopefully we'll get it sorted in the next league game. Uh, still falling out, as you saw there, a uh, scout report there from our scout currently based in Canada. Canada and then a couple of international friendlies with Canada as well. We drew the first one against Romania and then Ross Barkley scored a double against us in the game against England to ensure they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't be embarrassed and they would get themselves the win. So I was really frustrated about that. But with Canada, you know, I'm going to be so, so, so gutted if I don't get to play any World Cups or anything because, like, I just think this could be such an awesome, awesome, awesome project. And to have all of these Canadian kids here in our academy, like all the Canadian youth talent, you may possibly be noticing it if you are someone who's been keeping up to date with the Canada story. Our Canadian Youth Academy has got better season after season. We've actually got some really decent players in our academy now and I would love to just manage them in the World Cup. Send out all our 16, 17, 18 year olds. Wouldn't that be really fun calling up a load of teenagers for a World Cup tournament but uh, sadly for us I don't think it's going to happen but we'll have to wait and see. We're getting closer towards the end of the season now and we'll just go and see whether Canada are in the World Cup which hopefully, touch wood, fingers crossed they will be but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so we take on Manchester City for the second of three games in today's episode here. Back in the FA Cup, so game after game, we're in different competitions here, taking on City in the FA Cup quarterfinal replay here at Vicarage Road, I said a replay was the last thing we needed, so coming into this game, the last thing I want in this game, is to go into extra time and continue to prolong this really really annoying tie with them, so we're taking on City, first chance fell to them, De Bruyne was denied by a really good save by Jack Butland and then Joe Hart made a really good save there and Alaba blocked the follow up shot and turned it behind for a corner, but we would take the lead here just 7 minutes before the break, Bertrand Traore getting on the end of this right Tyler Cross and I've been singing the guy's praises all year long. He's been having a fantastic season and what a fantastic assist this is from Marco the Magician Ryan Tyler. Look at the way he crosses that boy into the centre. That is inch perfect. That is exactly where Traore wanted to be and it is a simple, simple finish for our number 11 as he makes it Watford 1, City 0. So great finish but what an assist from Marco and it is Watford 1, Manchester City 0. But sadly for us, we will concede a penalty against City yet again in the FA Cup quarter final. This time in the play. Unlike the uh, the penalty we conceded at the Etihad Stadium, though, this one definitely was one. Carvalho just clatters into David Silva from behind and takes down the Spaniard. So, had some uh, had some doubts about the referee's decision to give the penalty to City in the last game we took on uh, we, when we faced them. But in this one, no doubt whatsoever. That was a definite penalty. Really poor decision from Carvalho there. I don't know what I was trying to do really and why I lunged in from behind. But still, penalty to Manchester City. Sergio Aguero stands up to take it. Will the Argentine scorer make it 1-1? No, he won't. Because Butland pulls off the save 
save and Connor Plianka turns the rebound behind for a corner. Jack Butland, how many times, man, how many times will we be thanking this guy? What a save from Butland from the spot kick and the Ukrainian turns behind for a corner. So Butland keeps us in front here at Vicarage Road and it's still Watford 1 at Manchester City nil. We had a great chance to double our lead here in the 65th minute. This drill cross comes towards Williams at the far post. It's a great save by Joe Hart and Sammy Nasri gets the ball away. So still Watford 1, Manchester City nil. And a chance for City late on to equalise here as Otamendi gets on the ball and picks out Raheem Sterling. The former Liverpool man goes for goal but fires a shot over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish. Final score, Watford 1, Manchester City nil. So they took us to a replay, but in the end, we come through with the win. We are through to the FA Cup semi-finals and our defence of the trophy lives on for another round. So delighted with that. It was a tough game. It was one of those where there weren't too many chances, but the chances that were there were really clear cut. Butland had a really good game between the sticks, including that penalty save as well. So very pleased we got the win there and we are through to the FA Cup semi-finals. So really pleased with that. And you heard me discuss it at the start of the episode and I discussed it in the last episode as well. Right now we are feeling the pressure, you know, being in the league, the cup and Champions League as well. I want to win all three. But of course, with the squad, we have to keep on rotating it. We have to keep on resting players as well. We've always got midweek games, only a couple days rest between the games. It's it's really, really hard for everyone to stay fit out there. But, you know, I just want to make sure we do win at least one or two trophies this season. And we are firm favourites for the league. But the last thing I want to do is see us get caught up in the league by United, who are the most likely team to catch us, just being three points behind us. Be caught up by United, for example, lose our lead in the league table and not be able to win it. And then, of course, fall out of the Champions League and the FA Cup as well. We need to stay in a minimum of two competitions in my opinion try and win a double once again just like last season where we won the FA Cup and the Europa League as well so def desperately trying to stay in as many competitions as possible even though it's really really hard for us so we take on Hull City for the third and final game of today's episode here away at the KC Stadium and just two minutes in we would win ourselves a penalty as well Conor Plianka was taken down by the whole man there definite spot kick after the Ukrainian got himself inside with a couple of skill moves and was shoved to the ground so penalty to Watford Conor Plianka wanted to take the penalty instead of Mario Balotelli, but Balotelli said, no way, mate, seriously, I have not scored a goal in a few games. I'm feeling like I'm going to start doubting myself, not before long, believe it or not, Balotelli might possibly have some doubts over his ability. He says, I want to take this penalty. I'm the usual penalty kick taker. I've scored quite a few of them this season. I know I can put the ball in the back of the net, and he does just that. Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, and it has been quite a few games since a goal for Balotelli. He does score there, and we get a whole city nil, Watford won. But sadly for us, the lead would only last for five minutes, because Felipe Augusto would equalise for the home side, and Butland, who pulled off a fantastic penalty save in the last game against City. Well, you know, maybe I shouldn't have sung his praises too much because this was an absolute howler. And I know that all goalkeepers make mistakes, but Butland is one of those who makes mistakes more than quite a lot of goalkeepers. The cross comes in from the corner and, um, yeah, I mean, what, what's he doing? <laughs> what is he doing? Where is he diving to? I do not know. Felipe Augusto equalises for the home side and Hull are back on level terms. And in the 20th minute here, a great chance to retake the lead. Balotelli finds Conor Bianca causing Hull some damage early on. He picks out William Carvalho through to Loftus-Cheek. He holds the ball up well, Loftus-Cheek gives it to Ross Barkley. What a free ball this is to Lloyd Isgrove out wide. Isgrove chips it to the far post and who's there? It's Conor Plianka. He won the penalty early on in the game. He would have been disappointed to see Balotelli rob the ball off him and take it himself. But Balotelli comes to celebrate with him, the first teammate to do so, because he's glad to see his teammate notch up and get on the score sheet here. And he does make it whole City 1 and Watford 2. So Conor Plianka gets us back in front in this game. He's had a pretty decent season for us as well. A couple of assists, won a few penalties and also now four goals in the Premier League as well. So at the break, as you can see here, it was a pretty poor first half, in all honesty. Only those three chances were there to report and it all resulted in goals. But either way, Hull City won Watford 2. We would win ourselves our second penalty of the game, seven minutes after the restart here. Loftus-Cheek won the ball back off Andrew Robertson here, took it round the Scottish left-back, who had a clattering of knees with Loftus-Cheek. Ruben hits the deck and the referee awards a second penalty. So Balotelli scored the first one. Can he make it two from two from the spot? Is he going to go to the same corner or the opposite one? He goes to the opposite one, he tricks the goalkeeper and he does score as well to make it Hull City 1 Watford 3. So we get ourselves a two goal cushion in this game. Balotelli with two penalties, either side of Conor Plianka scoring as well and it is Hull City 1 Watford 3. So they'll be disappointed to have conceded two penalties in this game but the fact of the matter is they were both definite penalties and the referee called it right. So Balotelli makes it Hull City 1 Watford 3 and in the 60th minute here Balotelli sprints down the left hand side here takes it round Clafison, gets himself inside the area, the defender goes to ground and for the third time in the game, the referee awards a penalty. So a third penalty for Watford. A hat-trick of penalties. And can Mario Balotelli get his hat-trick from all three penalties? Balotelli against the goalkeeper. Where's he going to go this time? He switches it up 
once again and again he fools the goalkeeper. Mario Balotelli, too good from penalties. Whole City won Watford for a hat-trick of penalties and a hat-trick of scored penalties as well. All through Mario Balotelli or Mario Penaltelli, we should call him now. So Balotelli notching up again. He's got 18 goals in the Premier League, I swear. At least seven or eight have come from penalties, man. It's absolutely crazy. That's his third one of the game. We don't care, though. All the goals count and it is Hull City 1, Watford 4. We had a great chance to make it 5-1 here in the 88th minute. Put the icing on the cherry on the cake, as I would say, and we will do just that as well. Troy Deeney comes off the bench and says, don't forget about me, Docs, man. Seriously, I know I'm not first team anymore. I know I'm not the skipper anymore, but I can always score a goal when you need one. We didn't need one, but he scored one. He wanted one. Troy Deeney fakes us around the last defender, curls it in with a weaker left foot. A fantastic finish by the number nine. We won't forget about the guy. He'll always be in the squad, even if he's in the reserves. Gets his fifth of the season and makes it Hull City 1, Watford 5. So 5 won the final score. What a resounding victory and a great way to return to winning ways in the league as well. Disappointed to draw against Everton. Disappointed to lose against City in our last two league games. But this is how you start putting the pressure on the teams that are chasing you behind you in the league. You know, you show that you're not willing to slip up too many times. A fantastic victory. What a fantastic dominant display. I mean, the critics may sneer at three penalties, but we're the ones laughing with three points. Really good performance. Balotelli with a hat-trick. And another three points keeps us top of the table as we only have a few games to go in the league and we are still three points clear with six games to go. It's going to be a very frantic finish to see who wins the title. City aren't out of it either at 62 points, but either way, for the time being, we're the league leaders and destiny is in our own hands. But that does any episode, guys, so thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like, so it's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.